Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Allie Jeter. And I'm Rob Riches. Here's your news now. Spring break is coming up next week and Cabrini students are thrilled for a week with no classes. Let's go to Jimmy to see what students plan to do on their week off. Hey everyone, I'm Jimmy Crow on location here on the Commons. Let's see what everyone's doing for spring break. I'm going down to West Virginia to uh, help renovate houses for people down there uh, with campus ministry. This is my second time doing it. It's great. I loved it last year. You get such a great feeling when you're all done. And um, I can't imagine doing anything else over break, anything that would matter as much as this. Um, we do whatever work needs getting done. A lot of times it's flooring, drywall, plumbing, whatever, whatever they need. And one of the really cool things about Appalachia is that we get the chance to get to know the people that we work with. So we're not just going there, fixing up a house and leaving. We actually get a chance to talk to the people who live there. We get to hear their story. We get to hear their, wh where they come from and things like that. And so it's a really eye-opening experience to learn about a different side of the world, different side of the country that you wouldn't necessarily have ever gotten the chance to hear about or see. I am going to be hanging out with friends and catching up on some work that's due after break probably. I don't know, I have a bunch of different hobbies. I want to get back into calligraphy, um, just leisure. <laughs> I may actually be back here a little bit just to do odds and ends in the lab. And um, I, it's just what I like to do as well. I, get, I just like it, so I, you know, why not? I'm going to hang out with some friends, you know, go to, go to bars maybe, you know, just have a good time. The job market is tough and having the right approach to job hunting is crucial. Let's check in with Bethany Begenhoe and see what she found out about having the right skills to land the perfect job. I'm Bethany Begenhoe, live here with Brian Jensen, who understands what it takes to be the right candidate and persevere despite the odds. Brian Jensen has dedicated his career to successfully finding the right employer for candidates. He has accomplished this by overcoming his own obstacle of sudden hearing loss and deafness. Let's check it out. I get that resume and I screen on all of these kind of criteria. The person gets hired, I put the resume in a personnel file, and I never, ever refer to it again, ever. If I determine whether they should be fired or get a bigger raise or be promoted, I determine it on these things. Always, always, always. And these sit in the file. This is where successful people are. And again, this is good news for you. This is very good news for you because if you don't meet all these criteria, that doesn't mean that you can't get that job you want. People get jobs by exception all the time. When I went deaf, I thought, how can I use this to, my, to benefit myself and to benefit others? And um, the topic of perseverance, and the topic of service, and the topic of leadership were kind of the topics that came to my mind. So, look, I could train on that stuff, I could speak about it, and I could also speak about my own experience in um, uh, being a deaf individual um, and what it's been like to go from fully hearing to, you know, profoundly deaf and how did I muddle through it with that. So I thought, you know what, that would be a pretty good shtick. I could, I could talk about perseverance and then use as my example, you know, my own experience. I'm Bethany Bagenhow. Now back to you at the news desk. A continuing string of robberies in a Delaware County has reached Radnor. The Vernie Robbins Fine Jewelry Store in Radnor was robbed at gunpoint earlier this week. According to Radnor Police, around five men smashed out several jewelry cases and stole an undetermined amount. All but one robber wore masks. Police are offering a $10,000 reward for information about the robbers and have released a sketch of one of the men involved. Pennies turned into thousands of dollars after, three, after a three-week fundraiser at Norristown's Whitehall Elementary School. The Pennies for Patients program allowed students to proudly present a check for more than $2,500 to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. The organizations were overwhelmed and impressed with the young students' generosity and achievement, said organization leader Grace Siaccio. At another elementary school, things weren't quite so good. A fifth grader in North Philadelphia went on a mini rampage after bringing a BB gun to school. The school's principal detained the boy after he threatened one student and shot another in the leg. Fortunately, no one was seriously injured. The student was taken into police custody. And that was your trip around the block. Now let's go across the nation with Rob. Hours before Philadelphia's BB gun incident, a teenager opened fire inside a high school cafeteria earlier this week in Chardon, Ohio. 
Around 7.30 a.m., a student entered the cafeteria and started shooting, killing one student and wounding four others. The teen was chased out of the school by a teacher and later caught by authorities about a half a mile away from the high school. Two other students have died in the hospital. Gas prices continue to rise for the 21st day in a row. According to the Motorist Group AAA, the nationwide average rose to $3.72. So far in 2012, prices are up 13%. Average prices in California, Alaska, and Hawaii are over $4 a gallon. The lowest average gas prices are around $3.20 in Wyoming and Colorado. Medical marijuana will be available by the end of the year in New Jersey at the earliest. The State Department of Health reported safeguards against theft and fraud was much more challenging than predicted. Next month, the state plans to announce a registry of physicians who can prescribe marijuana to medically approved patients who will be allowed to have two ounces a month. The price has not yet been set, and medical insurance will not cover the drug. Now let's go to Ali for your trip around the world. Tensions are mounting for Afghan and American soldiers who live and fight alongside each other after this past week's killings of two American service members by an Afghan security official. Military experts suspect the killings were an act of revenge after United States military personnel accidentally burned a pile of Qurans earlier in the week. Most advisors working alongside Afghan officials have currently been withdrawn from their posts for fear of more attacks. Occupy Philly is not standing alone in its fight against corporate greed. Occupy London recently set up tents and equipment outside St. Paul's Cathedral in North London. Please remove the protesters along with their current homes. The English High Court stated the eviction of the camp was to ensure public safety and maintain order. They asked protesters to move along peacefully. A 200-year-old undersea treasure was discovered in a shipwreck in Spain. The ship known as Mercedes sank in a naval battle more than 200 years ago. U.S. court ruling rejected Peru's claim over the multi-million dollar treasure. Nearly 600,000 coins were recovered, estimated to be worth as much as $500 million. Spain plans to display the historical coins for the public's viewing. And that was your trip around the world. Now let's go to Jimmy for this week's Tech Connection. As expected, Apple announced that they will hold a media event at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday, March 7th at the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts in San Francisco. The tagline on the invitation reads, we have something you really have to see and touch. Apple was widely expected to introduce the iPad 3 at the event, featuring a higher resolution display and improved graphics. I will be sure to stay glued to the blogs for coverage and report back to you next time on Apple's latest creation. The Japan Broadcasting Corporation has announced a new digital sensor capable of picking up ultra-high-definition digital video footage at 120 frames per second. This new sensor captures video that can produce 16 times more pixels than your current HDTV. Sorry to say, but there are no commercially available TVs that can handle the resolution of this highly experimental technology. That's all I have for now. I pl I'll stay plugged in right here to bring you the latest tech news. Now back to Ali and Rob at the news desk. Let's go to Mary-Kate McCann for this week's sports update. The Cavaliers claimed the 2011 Colonial States Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship with an 86-79 win over Keystone Friday night. Cabrini wins the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament as a Mid-Atlantic's top seed. The Cavs will welcome Castleton State College to Nearney Fieldhouse on Friday night at 7.30. After a long preseason of practice and scrimmages, the spring sports have finally started. The Cabrini College men's lacrosse team received a 9-3 win over Haverford College for their season opener. This victory has moved the Cavaliers ranking to number 17 in the latest poll. The first game opener for the Lady Cavs will take place on March 13th against Notre Dame University. Junior Chrissy Pascarello looks to lead the Cavaliers after scoring 29 goals and 11 assists in 2011 season. According to the CSAC preseason poll, the Cabrini College women's lacrosse team was selected to finish third, following Gwena Mercy College in second place and Mary Wonder University in first. In other news, Cabrini's athletic and recreation director, Joe Ginta, has resigned. Over the past four years, Ginta has made a huge impact while at Cabrini College. Ginta returns to Temple University where he spent five years before moving to Cabrini to become senior associate athletic director. That's all I have for you this week. Now back to Ali and Rob. Now let's go to Holly with your entertainment news. The 84th Annual Academy Awards took place this past weekend in California. Billy Crystal was back hosting for his ninth time, and while it wasn't a horrible performance, many were expecting better. 
Taking home some of the night's most anticipated awards were Meryl Streep for actress in a lead role for her performance in The Iron Lady. Streep holds the record for most nominations ever, which is 17. Of those 17, she has won three times. Jean Duardine took home the award for actor in a lead role for the silent film The Artist, which also won Best Picture. This is the first silent film to win an award since the very first Academy Awards ceremony in 1929. Octavia Spencer won for Actress in a Supporting Role for her por portrayal as Minnie in The Help. And Christopher Plummer won for his role in The Beginners for Actor in a Supporting Role. At 82 years old, Plummer's win made him the oldest person to ever receive an Academy Award. One topic that has been very controversial lately is the reunion of Chris Brown and Rihanna and their collaboration on two songs. The reunion comes three years after Brown brutally attacked Rihanna on the night of the Grammys. It seems as though both Brown and Rihanna have been able to move past their differences. Let's check in with Felicia to see what students on campus think of the reunion. So can you just tell me what you think about Chris Brown and Rihanna's reunion? Um, I think it's good for them. It'll make them money. So it's, money's always good. And how do you feel about him like beating her up three years ago and now they're making songs together? I mean, forgive and forget. You know, she she's doing good. So the wounds have healed. It's all good now. How do you feel about their new collaboration? Uh, they should have just stayed apart. And wh why do you think that? I mean, she's not going for round two, is she? I, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it obviously didn't end well the first time, so why give it another go? Do you think that if they started dating, the fans and the media would scrutinize them a lot, or do you think no one would care because she forgave him? Uh, yeah, they definitely scrutinize him because, I, I don't, like I said, he beat the crap out of her. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. They're not going not gonna to like that, and I don't know. I think that Chris Brown and Rihanna, it's going to be an amazing reunion. I like the two songs they put out, and I'm excited to see what they have planned next. Can you please tell me your opinion about the Rihanna and Chris Brown reunion? I uh, strongly disagree there um, with their reunion. I, the songs are kind of disgusting, but um, it's about money, so then it's good, but social and how people look at it is bad. Well, I think that, you know, she pressed charges on him and got a restraining order, but now she's going back to him, so I think, you know, it's kind of stupid. I don't know why she did that. You know, she pressed charges against him and made a huge big deal about it, and now they just made a song. So it's kind of like, you know, I'm taking a domestic violence class and we've talked about it. And it just, you know, it shows that, I don't know, she's kind of just like letting it happen, I guess. And I think it's kind of weird. That's all I have for you this week. Back to the news desk. That's all we have for you this week. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and like us on Facebook. I'm Allie Jeter. And I'm Rob Richies. Have a great week, Cabrini.